Hello everyone, today I'll be making a lap status progress bar kind of thing like you've seen in the old uh, like Mario Kart 64 had one. Uh, actually I'll put some footage in the background here. As you can see across the middle of the screen it shows the uh, character icons and as they progress all around the lap they go across the screen. Just something simple like that. Uh, yeah, let's get started. Alright, so to begin we're first going to need something that tells us what a lap is, where the track is. Uh, for this we're, gonna, we're going to use a spline. Uh, so let's first create a new blueprint class of type actor and let's call this track spline. And open it up. Alright, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a spline component. Go to the utility spline and let's make this a closed loop. And we'll compile. Alright, now we can just drag that in. We can grab a spline point and hold Alt and you can move the position around and it'll create new spline points. And I'll just create a quick little track here. So there we go. Now you can see we've got a closed track and all the points are at varying lengths. But to uh, superimpose this onto a progress bar, we're going to need uh, standard lengths so we know where we are from position to position. Basically, it'll be a constant rate. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create another spline based on this one, but with spline points at regular intervals. So, let's go back into our track spline and we will duplicate the spline and we'll call it spline new and we're going to go into the construction script and we want to get our old spline and we want to get the length of our old spline so we can divide it by our given length and that will give us how many spline points we need so we'll take our spline, we'll get the length get spline length and we'll divide it by a set number float divided by float, and we'll just divide it by, say, 100. So every 100 units, we will create a new spline point, new spline point for our new spline. It's a bit hard to, a bit hard to say, but, uh, all right. So for that, we're going to use a for loop. So let's just search for a for loop. And since we know our number of spline points that we need, we'll just convert the float into a integer and what we're going to need to do first before we create any new spline points is we want to make sure that there's no old spline points that could mess things up get in our way as such uh, so we'll get our new spline and we will search for point and clear spline points this is just so if we decide to move it around each time the construction script is, construction script is called it won't create duplicate points and things, we'll just get rid of the old one and start over again. Alright, so there's that. And the next thing we need to do is to create our new spline points. So we'll get our new spline. And we will say points again. And we need to add. So we'll just say add point. We're going to say add spline point at index. Since we already have an index here, we'll just use that same index and connect up the body. Now for our position, we just need to get 100 units along the position from the last point. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our index and we're going to multiply it. integer times float. And we just need to multiply by that same value we used before. So at index zero, it'll be zero. Index one, it'll be position 100 units along the spline. Um, so now we just need to get that position on the spline. So we will say location at distance along spline. And we'll use the original spline. And I'm going to use world coordinates here, just because that's what I prefer. And that's our position. 
So now, if all goes well, just make sure that that's blooping. Yep. All right. So if all goes well, we can now go into our level, and it created all the new spawn points that we need. So as you can see now, every hundred units along the spline, we have new points of our second spline. All right. So now we have all of the spline points that we need, but now we need to do something with that information. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new widget. So user interface widget blueprint, and we'll just call this, I don't know, lap progress, I guess, w underscore lap progress, and we'll open it up. And we're going to use a slider, so I'll drag in a slider and move the anchors around, center it, and give it a decent alignment to work with. And let's make it as wide as the screen. All right, that's all we have to do for that point. Uh, next, we'll just go into our graph and we will get our slider. All right. And on every tick, we're going to update this information. Um, it's probably a better way to do it for your specific purposes, but it's just how I'm gonna do it for now for testing purposes. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get a reference to the player and to our spline. Let's create variables for each of those. First one we'll create is spline, and we'll call spline, uh, let's see, spline component, there we go. Object reference, and we need to create a character reference. And we'll make both of those public. I mean, set the character first, set the type. Type character. I'm actually going to use the third person character just so I can get specific information about it if I want to. Third person character, object reference. And we're going to expose on spawn. You can see right there, expose on spawn. That just lets us set it when we create the widget. We're going to do the same thing for the spline. Expose and spawn. All right. So now what we need to do is, well, the end goal is going to be to set the slider value. So we'll just say set value, and this is going to be a zero to one value. So we need to get a a value that's going to tell us if we're at the beginning of a lap, end of a lap, and convert that to a zero to one. All right. So. What we're first going to do is we're going to get our spline. Get. And we want to get the number of spline points. So we will get number of spline points. And we're going to divide a value by this number of spline points. So we're going to divide. I'm actually going to do uh, float divided by float. This is like calculating your, you know, grade average for a class or something. It's the same, same type of deal. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. The next thing we need to do is we need to find input key. Find input key closest to world location. This is basically going to take our character position and tell us what is the closest part on the spline to our character's location. It's going to give us a value of between spline points. So for between spline point three and four, it'll give us a value of 3.3 or 3.9, you know, something in that range. Um, so it'll give us ballpark information about where we are between spline points. So for our world location, we're obviously gonna get our character reference and we'll get active location, active location, and we'll plug in the world location. All uh, right, so now we have to get, we'll take our input key, which will give us a location between points, and we'll divide that by the number of points, which will give us basically the percentage of how far we are along this line. And that's gonna be our value. All right, connect that up to event tick, say compile. All right, so the last thing we, that we need to do right now is we need to 
be able to set our variables and to create the widget. So we're going to go back to our track spline and go to the event graph, event on begin play. We're going to create the widget and add it to our viewport. Select our widget, go wlab lap progress. And as you can see, our expose and spawn variables are here. So we'll just create, uh, we'll take our spline new and we'll set that as the spline that we're going to be using to track our characters. And for our character reference, uh, we'll just, for now, we'll get player character. To third person character. I'm going to convert this to a pure cast, which shouldn't ever fail. All right, and now we can test it. Hit compile, hit play. As you can see, we have a bar across the center of our screen, and we're just that little icon over at the end. You can see it. And as I go around the track, we'll slider moves. All right, so that's the basics of it, um, but that's kind of boring. So let's um, let's crank it up a little notch. Uh, I'm going to go into our character, our third person character, and I'm going to edit it. All right, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give our character a little icon so we know which character it is so we can determine who's what. In the Mario Kart example, it'd be like showing a picture of Yoshi versus Mario versus Donkey Kong, etc. Let's create a little variable, and I'm going to use a, well, I'm gonna name it first. So I'll just call it portrait, and I can't spell. So I'm actually just gonna call it picture. And we're going to make this a texture two, object reference compile and in our let's do it on begin play that begin play let's just set this to whatever we want so set and we'll set it to sure the UE4 logo that works So now what we need to do is go into our lap progress and when this is created, we're going to set our slider picture. So we'll get our slider. We're going to set style, set style. We're going to break the struct pin and we're going to look for our widget style normal thumb and we're going to break that pin as well. And this gives us a whole lot of options, but really all we need is the widget style normal thumb image image. So we'll get our character reference and we will get our picture variable. And it's as simple as just hooking those up. So on event construct, we will, we'll just set that, uh, set the style. All right, so now if we hit compile, play. As you can see, we've got a little UE4 logo as our, basically as our portrait icon. All right, um, that's basically all, well, that's all the basics. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so here's a little uh, expanded example. I've got about 60 of the third person characters out there right now just running around. As you can see, it gets a little cluttered on this little progress bar, but they're all moving around quite well. I uh, even put a little jump in here for them. Yeah, right now I just have them running around on the, just along the spline basically, going from spline point to spline point. All right, so as a quick little review, this is how I set everything up. Uh, in the track spline, on the construction script, I cleared all the old splines. I got how many splines we needed 
and I created the new splines based on the set intervals, uh, the event graph. On this one, I just did a get all of class just to get all the characters, quick and dirty way of doing it. Uh, for each one of those, I set which spline it's going to follow, and I created the widgets. Uh, for the third person character, just to make the a quick and dirty way of getting all of the characters to move just around the spline for the example, I, uh, I started off by giving each one a random, uh, random picture based on this list, and from there, I just found the closest location, closest spline point basically, and so that's where you're going to start. And then I did an AI move to, we moved to the next closest point, and then we, uh, and from there we incremented the point index, and just told it to go to the next point. If it's already at the last point, go to the first. Uh, pretty simple on that one. Uh, for the actual widget itself, all we were doing is on event construct. We get the picture that's associated with the character, and we set the picture, the thumb, basically, of the slider. And on event tick, this is where we were updating the slider's value. Uh, basically, we get the number of spline points, and we're dividing the spline point that they're at currently by the number of spline points. Uh, yeah, gives us a percentage basically, a 0 1 value. That's all we really need. Um, yeah, it's just a fun, quick little uh, thing to throw together. Take it, make it your own, and see what you can do with it. Yeah, thanks for watching.